G'day friends and welcome to another one of my videos. Now today we're doing a video vlog style just to make things easy for me. It's pretty quiet out there now with social distancing all in full effect. Anyway, let's forget about all that sort of stuff. Today I want to talk to you about a little hack I did with the Rode AI1 audio interface so I can connect an XLR mic to my M50. So if you want to find out how I did that, well then stick around. Welcome back. Now, as you can see behind me, I had uh, the lights and the camera all ready to go uh, to do some recording. I was going to do a particular video, but then I'm um, still having this problem with the sound uh, in this room. There's just way too much echo, too much reverb, and, and so I need to get a mic really close to me. Now, for normal recording purposes, I can use uh, a nice little... Uh, dynamic mic that can help me I can get nice and close and get some good uh, sound without all the external sort of reverb that's happening but when you're trying to uh, record away from the camera I was using a little um, lapel mic and that was also helping but I was finding it was very fidgety it was very hands-on making sure that the camera was turned on that you were in focus and then that the, the actual lapel mic was transmitting uh, every once in a while I'll be having a really good go at it and then I would run out of battery and one device so it was just becoming nightmare so I did manage to do a couple of things that helped me out so let's uh, have a bit of a walk around and see what I actually did so now I'm using the Osmo pocket to do the recording hopefully that's gonna make it easier for me to move but as you can see here I've got my uh, M50 on the tripod and I've got the Feel World uh, monitor to help me focus. But then up here, if I don't smash into things, I've got a Rode XLR mic that uh, is helping me uh, capture the sound. Now, uh, I've also got my light box, uh, which I'm really enjoying. The actual light that this thing uh, produces is so beautiful uh, I'm so glad that I actually invested in it is a it's a beautiful light box it's the aperture um, light storm 120 D mark 2 which is a beautiful light and I'll do a video on it but if you uh, want to find more about it there's plenty of videos about this light praising its uh, goodness so anyway back to the XLR mic so as you can see I've got this little setup uh, it's going on a microphone stand it's going all the way down using its uh, XLR cable but uh, the thing that brings it all together is my little Rode AI1 audio interface. Now, the audio interface, this is a USB-C audio interface, and I've been doing a little bit of homework because unfortunately Rode wants you to use it um, in the way that they recommend, which is plugging straight into USB and powering this device and the mic attached to it through USB power. But unfortunately, you know, the M50 doesn't have USB power. So how can I get the mic working through the left and right channels, which is coming straight out of the uh, box itself, into my trusty M50? So as you can see, I've got the XLR jack that's actually going straight into the camera itself. So hopefully I can plug it in there without tipping things over so um, so let's have a bit of chat let's have a sit down and let's deconstruct this and I'll show you ex uh, exactly how I did it so in case you have one of these AI one uh, audio interfaces uh, you may be able to do this too so let's have a sit down and have a chat about it here we are nice and set up I've got all my bits and pieces around me but in the middle of all this is the Rode AI1 
This device is an audio interface. Now, if you're not familiar with these, uh, you probably are. What these allow you to do is bring in an analog sound signal into a digital recording through your computer. So it relies on the USB interface in the back of this device. So you can plug it into your computer and then you can use things like microphones or uh, musical instruments to uh, put sound from here into your computer. So to record them practically. Now this particular device, I love it, it's nice and compact. I always thought if I needed to travel with something, you know, this would be a very good size. It's a wonderful build, just like every other road product. And I know I'm sounding like a little bit of a road fanboy, but hey, when you're on a good thing, stick to it. So first of all, uh, we've got the XLR jack. Uh, then we've got uh, uh, a gain button, so you can increase the gain. Uh, it also has uh, the ability for you to uh, listen to the signal uh, with headphones. And it's got a beautiful pass-through feature that you can listen to um, the recording without delay. It make, makes a big difference. And on the rear, which is the savior of all this, is that there's two analog, analog outputs, uh, the right and left. So let me tell you how I sort of work with this. So first of all, what you're going to need is an XLR mic. So there are plenty out there. Now, the good thing about the AI one is that uh, it, it does uh, provide phantom power. So you can press the button, it turns on the phantom power. So you can actually use dynamic and ribbon mics um, as well as condenser mics. So it's totally up to you. So my um, XLR mic requires phantom power so I can just click that and it provides phantom power so I'm pretty happy about that now the second piece obviously is how do you get the sound from here into your camera obviously the M50 does not have a USB interface in order to receive the sound so this is where the analog inputs come in so as you can see I've got a long cable it's probably about I don't know uh, three meters long and on one side I've got a left and right channel uh, analog jacks and on the other side I've got a 3.5 millimeter XLR uh, sorry um, TRS jack that goes straight into the uh, M50 which is pretty good but you're asking the power what are you doing about the power because obviously this thing cannot run without power and uh, it requires um, at least five volts of power that's uh, coming from uh, the USB bus uh, on your computer. So I did a bit of research. I didn't want to plug anything in here and just fry it, right? And so I did a bit of research into what my Mac outputs as far as uh, USB power and what this requires as a minimum in order to run uh, the device, including uh, providing phantom power. So uh, what I came up with, and Rode, please forgive me if I'm telling people the wrong thing, I will take this video down, but I've been using this for quite some time and nothing wrong has happened with my device. So I purchased this particular USB-C uh, to, um, I guess, wall socket, AC power socket from the Apple store. So this is an Apple uh, branded uh, power and it does everything from 5 volts to 9 volts. So it, it scales depending. Then obviously you need a cable that is going to provide the power, a USB-C cable from this device here, right, on one side and then to the back of the Rode AI-1 and that is giving me enough power for me to do my job. I didn't want to go for something a little bit more power hungry because I don't want to fry this. I love this interface and I want to make sure it keeps on working. But what I found out the 5 to 9 volt from the Apple um, uh, store did work really well. So what does this mean, right? So one of the things that you're going to have to make sure you do when you plug this in is uh, play with the, the boost settings because as you know, the camera itself also has preamps. So it receives power and then boosts that power. So what you don't want to do is burn the preamps on your camera. So when you start with this, 
uh, make sure it's at a low uh, area. So uh, my setting for this using this particular configuration uses around uh, a third a third of the way, let's say 33, 30% uh, on the limit and I've got the gain on the camera to normal or standard. Now I have a monitor on top of the camera and what that allows me to do is to uh, monitor the uh, range that I'm getting. So the great benefits of this is obviously if you are wanting to see if you are doing a good job, all you need to do is slap on your headphones and then plug your headphones into that and you can actually test the the sound and um, the good thing about it is that most of the time um, I'm having to boost the sound in post-production in order to get the gains but because I'm actually tweaking the levels uh, before I start recording they're pretty much spot on, which is really good because I'm getting better sound um, and I'm really happy about that. So less uh, mucking around in post-production. Uh, you can monitor the sound while you're doing it. Um, and now you have a very good uh, and um, repeatable process because what I was using, especially using uh, mics like the Rode video mics, um, meant that I always always had to keep an eye on whether the battery was running out and they needed to be recharged or, or whatever. There's always something that was running out of battery. But with this little setup, my Rode AI-1 hack using the Mac 5 to 9 volt supply means that now I can plug in an XLR mic to my M50 setup whenever I want, which is pretty cool. So that's it, that's the video for today. Nice and quick and easy, very mobile using my uh, little Osmo Pocket. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. If you liked it, give me a like. If you uh, haven't subscribed, please do. And until the next time, ciao for now.